serving his Lord and Saviour. So before we begin, ladies and gentlemen, just a couple of quick little housekeepings. With the booklet that you have, the booklet will cover this evening's program. Also Saturday. So please, ladies and gentlemen, if you're coming on Saturday, bring your booklet back. We're going to expect twice what we have here on Saturday. So it's important if you bring your book back so that others that come Saturday can enjoy a booklet as well. Also, if you look on the back of your booklet, there's a QR code just at the bottom. That QR code, when you scan it with your phone, takes you to an online digital guest book where you can leave a message of condolence for Marion and her family. And I know many people have already done so, but folks, please, at some time this evening, if you get a chance, get your phone out, scan the code, and leave a beautiful message of thanks for Pastor Rudy, for his family. But now, I think we're just about ready to begin. So please enjoy this very, very beautiful service. Thank you. Well, welcome uh, tonight for being here. We're truly appreciative of your presence here this evening in order to celebrate a life well lived. Our dearly beloved Pastor Rudy, I never thought that this time would come for me, for a very dear friend. But above all, the family really appreciates your presence here. It helps them to recognize the importance, the value, and the respect that you have given Pastor Rudy Tan. I know it's a difficult occasion, but at the same time, you have to honor and respect the life of this great person. We would like to uh, offer our sincere condolences to uh, Pastor Marion, the children, the grandchildren, the in-laws, even the uh, relatives and friends who are not just here present in this building, but also watching us online, not just in Sydney, Australia, but overseas as well. So I would like to request everyone to be upstanding as we open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear God, for enabling us to gather here in order to celebrate the life of our dearly beloved, Pastor Rudy Tan. We are here to pay our last respects, to honor his memories, to celebrate his achievements, to gather us together, to encourage one another, to unite us in prayer, in worship, and in praise. We thank you, dear God, for all the things that you have done, that you have accomplished in our dearly, dearly, dearly beloved pastor, friend, mentor, teacher, father in the faith. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing as we are led by Pastor Sid Guinness of Praise and Worship, two of Pastor's favorite songs. Thou art worth 
worthy, oh Lord, sing Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy. But 
those who will give their tributes the first one uh, brother Rudy Neri a fellow worker and friend of pastor Rudy Thank you, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to give me to say something about our new pastor. Give me on top of the list of these people who want to honor him because I stay with him. We work together with him the longest <laughs> Many years, 24 years. So I have so many things to say about him. So tonight, I have the true privilege of honoring our beloved Rudy Tan. We meet in September, sometimes in 1989 at Westmead when FCF was just a young church. I was having a challenging period in my life and church became a heaven to me. I began to attend the Fairfield Bible study and pastor was that time our leader and an elder in the church. I knew nothing. And he helped me grow in the knowledge of the word. He was my pastor. And he was my boss. My brother in Christ. My mentor. My advisor. In life's problem. When I was on my own. Pastor invited me to family lunches. and dinner at Chinese restaurant. With the family, I have a place at their table. It made me feel like I belong. <sighs> Being on my own, it helped me improve my life skills. In short, I was taken care of. Sometimes in 1997, I was retrenched at, in the factory. But before that, I was roaming around this new building. It was only about more than a year. And I was in the front of this building and was asking myself, Lord, you gave us this big building and a new building and a beautiful one. But no one was looking after this building. And that was, I was 
complaining to the Lord because during that time, Marion and Pastor was the one cleaning the kitchen, the toilet. And in the year 1997, after a few months, I was retrenched. Soon after, Pastor offered me this job because he knew that I was retrenched and out of job. Rudy, don't look for another job. Stay here in the church. Look after the building. So I accepted the offer. You will receive the amount what you receive as a salary in your company. The church will give you a long service leave, sick leave, and Christmas bonus. Pastors bear generous. Bear is generous to everyone. And working so closely with him, for over 24 years, we were able to share many lunches, conversation, pray, speak about the church needs, and develop our friendship beyond just a working relationship. He was consistent. He arrived to church before 8 a.m. He's always early, never been late at work and in this Sunday service. He managed the affair of the church well. Whenever someone was in need, he would not refuse helping them, but did it in a wise manner. He would not just give them money, but would ask me to buy groceries for them. I had an ad, up close and personal relationship with pastor, and it was an honor to serve alongside him. He was a strong leader on Sunday and every day. My fondest memories of, have, of pastor will be the time we shared and worked together. I knew he worked and like things and always answer this call. Yes, sir. With us, when Marion joined working with us, our lunches became fewer, but that was expected. He told me, because I cook baked beans, ginger, I boil ginger and cinnamon. He told me, I have another boss on board. <laughs> Prophetic. Pastor encouraged me in my walk, in my faith walk, always made sure I never got stale, and he never took well when I wanted to step away from leading the senior citizen Bible study group. He does not like me to get bored or stale for being by myself. It was a sign of his own work hard ethic. No matter the challenge, pastor pushed through and ensured he was there for every church event possible. He was a decision person, a quick thinker, right there and there. He would decide and give a decision. He cared for everyone in the church, from the youngest to the eldest. He makes sure that our senior citizen Bible study group have regular excursion and free lunch. 
He served well, lead strong, and make sure people like me had a purpose and a place where they belong. And for that, I am forever grateful. To the family. To the family. Express my sincere condolences. Pastor has left a great legacy of faith, and personally, he has left a great legacy of love and leadership. There is a lot more I could say about my dear pastor. But I know there are many who wants to honor him. So I would like to finish this. But before, I thank you, Pastor, for believing me, releasing me, and most of all, for being my true friend. You saw me through many seasons of my life. And I am truly grateful to God for your life. Those things change my better. I thank you, boss. Surely, for me, you will be here around. We have been together for 24 years. I will never forget you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next, I would like to call on uh, Marilia Landicho, a friend. Good evening, everyone. I met Rudy when my husband, Rafi, invited him and Marion to attend the Bible study in our house many years ago. We became friends with Rudy and Marion. Our children grew up together. Our son, Rolf, with Munina, and our other son, Alvin, with Randolph. We were hoping that they have another child to grow up with our daughter, Gratian. But it did not happen. Anyway, what we did was made, we made Rudy the godfather of our only daughter. And uh, as a friend, one thing I can think of Rudy was his trust, trustworthiness. That is the word that I would think of when I think of him as a friend. But even when we were still here in Sydney, we were, of course, closer then because we got to see each other often. But then even when we moved to, to, see, to Brisbane, we still, we would pray with them whenever they're, for them whenever there are needs that we heard about for them and for the church. And we had communicated. It was not, of course, as regular as we should if we were living here. But still, the love and the care and the friend, friendship, was still there, of course, and we're still friends. Since we learned about Rudy's sickness, we started praying for his total and complete healing during our daily communion. We even declared that he should leave because he had not finished his assignments. That was what we thought, but we believe because he had a glimpse of heaven, he didn't want to come back. During the time when he was rendered dead for 20 minutes, and he was revived. He saw heaven, and the Lord honored that. One good thing, one thing I'd like to mention is Rudy was a good cook. He's <laughs> whenever we would have dinner at their place or lunch, he did a cooking. And the first time I, I, I 
we had talon, uh, omelet, Egle, uh, um, talong, what is that? Yeah, tortang talong. And he had his style. I couldn't copy it. Whenever I think, whenever we had, I would request, Rudy, can you make your, your torta? Even when he's, he visits at the home in Brisbane, Rafi would say, why do you have to ask him? He's visiting us and you make him cook. But anyway, because that's, that was my favorite food of Rudy. That's one thing. And I, I believe he'd be cooking talong, omelette, and letting have Jesus have a taste of that. But anyway, we believe that Rudy, when he came, went to heaven and uh, the heavenly father welcomed him, he said, welcome back home, son. And uh, he's enjoying himself so much. We are sad but he's enjoying himself. And I believe he hears us. In the portals of heaven, he can see what we're saying about him. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Marila. Let me call on uh, Naomi Enriquez, a former neighbor. Good evening, everyone. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Naomi Enriquez, former neighbor of the Tan family, and a very good friend for 37 years. Our deepest condolence to Pastor Marion and family. Let me read Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Pastor Rudy was a loving person, always helpful and caring. I remember my mother told me that she loved him like a son. She asked for him on her dying bed. My mother, by the way, was a member of FCF family before me, and she was the one that told me to join the FCF family before she passed away. She told me to be good to Pastor Rudy and family, and I did, I think. <laughs> Mark and Randolph became friends at the age of five. That was in 1985, when we moved into this new home. We became very good friends as years passed by. Pastor Rudy, was the godfather of my only daughter, Grace. He officiated our silver wedding anniversary way back in 2003. Marion was our sponsor then. He officiated Grace's wedding too. And lastly, Pastor Rudy went all the way to the Philippines to be at Mark's wedding, together with the rest of the Tan family. On the other hand, we were also the godparents on Randolph and V's wedding. So you see, our family are really connected. Oh, even Randolph and Mark are compares now too. So we pass it to the next generation. Anyway, in John 11 verse 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Pastor Rudy was a great man of God indeed. He listened to the call of God to be a shepherd to his flocks. He left his high paid job as systems development manager to be a pastor. He worked tirelessly and faithfully without complaining because I always see him with a nice smile and greeting people. He was on call 24 seven for visitations in homes and hospitals. Many times I can hear him because he got a big car. He liked his V8 or V6 car. 
his car at midnight or 2 a.m. going out for the sick or the bereaved family. In Matthew 11, verse 28, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Pastor Rudy had a vision for FCF family to grow and spread the gospel of our Lord. He was used by God to lead us and build this church for everybody to enjoy the fellowship in comfort. He left us burden free. You know the meaning of burden free? That means you don't owe anything. Because everything you can see here is paid off. You see, we are so blessed. Thank you, Lord. Let us all continue his legacy to be united, supporting and loving one another as FCF family, and continue serving God faithfully until our last breath. In John 11, verse 26, it says, Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Let me read you a little poem. A life well lived. A life well lived is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace. From someone who has made our world a brighter, better place, it's filled with moments sweet and sad, with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared, and laughter through the years, a life well lived is a legacy of joy and pride and pleasure, a loving, lasting memory our grateful hearts will treasure. Tonight is going to leave me an everlasting impact on my life because I can never get a friend like him again. Beloved Pastor Rudy, thank you for everything you have done to my family. Your unconditional love, encouragement, support, and faithfulness throughout the years will forever be engraved in my heart. I will try my best to remain faithful with the FCF family as I have promised you. I salute you, Pare. Rest well on your journey until we meet again in God's heavenly kingdom. To God be the glory. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Naomi. Now we call on Pastor Nonoy Perdon, a ministry partner and friend. Good evening. One thing I admire with Pastor Rudy is that he attached important, significant on almost everything he touches. As I can only uh, perceive, he wants you to take away something from this service. A thought, a laughter, a memory, and the things that will edify you as a human being, as a creation of the Almighty. The prophet Habakkuk in the Bible complained to the Lord, how long must I call for help and you do not listen? The law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. What God answered Habakkuk? He said, watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if I told you. I had the privilege of being nurtured by our dear pastor in the church ministry. Starting as a great alala and driver 
for my beautiful wife, who was one of the two piano players during the old days in the church. And then I progressed into a deacon, an elder, and part of the pastoral staff. On two occasions, he even asked me to accompany him in two separate Autumn Leaders Conference at Church on the Way in Van Nuys, California in the USA under Pastor Jack Hayford. In our church, I remember our dear pastor would confide to us instances of God's grace working in his life even when he was an unbeliever back in the Philippines. Or as in his word, an atheist, a non-believer. Amazing, he told us during those early days. In one, in one instance, he said, he saw a, in a down, an script down, downtown advertisement that gave him an opportunity to learn computer programming in exchange for teaching others. He passed the course and with flying colors, which started his successful IT career and was his pathway to migrate to Australia. Amazing how a man who built up a career in IT management through his midlife age he switched direction into church ministry to serve his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To lead a group of new Christian believers called Filipino Christian Fellowship, now the FCF Life Center, we are today. Pastor Rudy Tan nurtured many into the ministry, both personally and through the infrastructure of facilities he had helped establish in this church and in the Christian denomination, Church of Four Square Gospel Australia. Pastor Rudy Tan served for several occasions as general supervisor of Four Square Australia and was a prime mover of many advocacies for the Christian denomination. But here in Ipsip, with patience and loving care, he instituted a worship service giving importance to individual participation in worship and prayers and prayer with one another through our time of prayer circle and the formation of Sunday schoolers, birthday and wedding celebrants. No, my friends, this church is not an auditorium nor a cinema. We minister to each one another. That is his dream. His dream to take out of your essence the possibilities of God in your life, each one of you, whatever stage of faith you are in. Pastor Rudy was instrumental in establishing four local churches in greater Sydney area, which consequently were chartered into independent ministries. Other pastor would often relate to us, his colleagues in this church, about the grace of God that sustained him in his 70s. I like to think that he, as we do today, would have looked with amazement at the things that Lord had done in through his life. Amazing. How an ordinary man was used for such extraordinary things. And for us, an encouragement for what can happen when you entrust your life 
and plans to the Lord. Again, as the prophet Habakkuk said, watch and be amazed at what God can do to us. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Pastor Nonoy. Um, I would like to call on uh, Estella Cabales, the inanak or the grandchild of Pastor Rudy. Good evening, everyone. Um, inaanak po uh, during our wedding. <laughs> um, it is an honor to be upstanding here and speak about our dear pastor. I hope I will not cry. <laughs> um, for those who don't know me, my name is Estella Cabales. Uh, my husband, Ed, and I, uh, we serve as an elder of FCF under the leadership of Pastor Rudy and Pastor Marion. Um, I've known Pastor Rudy and his family since I've joined FCF in the early 80s with my nanai. I, um, I was part of the youth ministry then, and there was only a few of us, I think five of us. Um, sorry, I have to put my glasses. FCF then was only a small fellowship in Stockland in Wetherill Park, and I was, yeah, as I said, I was part of their unit ministry. And because FCF was a small fellowship back then, there was no pastor, but a group of elders leading, uh, and Pastor Rudy was one of them. As far as I can recall, Pastor Rudy was already doing um, administrative duties for FCF. He was always busy, well-organized, and a good communicator. Um, he was very hardworking. I, I know Pastor is very masipag. When he was still an elder, I approached him and told him that I'm going back to Philippines um, to get married. And we wanted him to be one of our ninong, or one of the sponsors for our wedding. He gave us his blessings, although he couldn't come over to Philippines. So my husband and I, we were married for 30 years this year, and it was not only up until nine years ago that Pastor Rudy signed our marriage contract. <laughs> it took a while. It, it, it then became um, a joke, a common joke between us that each time I see him at church, I would remind him in our language in Tagalog, Pastor, you haven't signed our marriage contract yet. And then he would jokingly reply, where is the marriage contract? Are you sure you're married? <laughs> um, so my family and I are truly, truly blessed by his life, even my children. Um, it was hard when we heard the news about his passing because he is the only pastor I've known most of my life and been close with since I migrated in Sydney. The only pastor who have gone above and beyond in helping us when we tried to sponsor my Ate Esther um, to care for my tatai. He dedicated and prayed over my children, our homes, even our first cars. Um, joyous and sad occasions in our family, he was there to comfort us when my nana and my tatai passed away. He was also one of my teachers at Bible college, and during breaks, I would sometimes sit, sit next to him and we'll just talk. Hindi na ako nahiya kay Pastor. One night, I came home from the class excited and told my husband I could sit all night and just li listen to pastor talk about the book of Romans. He is that smart <laughs> and very intelligent. I remember clearly my last conversation with pastor. It was a week before he was hospitalized. He was sitting on that side and with his walker. I'm not sure whether it, whether it was his walker or his um, was it a wheelchair. And uh, as I approached, I noticed the brand of the walker is Hero. 
I said to him, Pastor, ang ganda ng brand ng walker nyo. I like the brand of your walker, hero. Then I hugged him and I told him, you're my hero po, Pastor. And then he looked up and he gave me a big smile. When I walk away, I was thinking he must have thought I was crazy to saying that, you know, weird in saying that. But then again, I was glad I said those words because I was able to express to him how much I appreciate him for being my pastor for most of my life, a hero in faith. Like what I said in our chat with the pastors and elders to Ati Marion and the family, our thoughts are, and our prayers are with you all. The whole of FCF hearts are heavy with sadness, but knowing Pastor Rudy is now with his maker is a great comfort to us all. Pastor Rudy, we will truly miss you, your teachings, your love, and prayers for the whole FCF family. To many of us, you are an inspiration, a great teacher and a pastor. To Ed and myself, you'll always be our loving Ninong. And I give glory to our Lord Jesus Christ for your life. And I could just hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Thank you, Stella. We'll now watch a video tribute. I've known Pastor Rudy Tan for 31 years. In all these years, I've known him. He was a man that was suited in his faith. My favorite things in him was he was a very humble person and had a big heart for people. I never forget his love and compassion for me and my family. He was always there for the big moments in my life. My wedding, my kids' dedication, and birthdays. But something I will always cherish about Pastor is that I can always turn to him for advice and comfort. We miss you and love you so much. Pastor Rudy had impacted so many lives in our life group, and I quote, Remembered Pastor Rudy visiting our son in the hospital who had brain surgery and brought him his favorite toy. Pastor Rudy was remembered as a prayerful man. His encouragement to us to pray not only for our needs, but to be sensitive for the needs of others and pray for them. Can't forget that even with a short notice and their very tight schedule, they found time to celebrate and come to the two important events in our lives, house dedication and milestone birthday, and the FCF thoughtfulness during um, the operation due to work injury. They felt the love of FCF. Behind that pulpit, we saw an anointed man of God, dedicated and passionate to his calling. Up to the last few weeks, he still did his best to stand and deliver the word of God. Though restricted physically, he continued on to be obedient to the ministry to which he was called. Very humble and meek, who preferred to be always in the background. FCF becomes what it is now because of pastor's love for God and his word through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, loving through every heart that desires the word of God. Thanking God for the work that has been accomplished in him and through him. To God be the glory. Pastor Rudy, we are sad but also joyful because your absence is the presence of a church that will continue to thrive. Your legacy is a ministry that will continue to grow in FCF. Your sacrifice was life to all in Jesus. We will never forget you. Thank you, Pastor Rudy, for believing in us as a family. We are blessed to serve together in FCF. Thank you for showing us that serving God doesn't have an expiry date. It is a lifelong commitment. We will miss you and we love you so much. Uh, one of my favorite uh, memories of Pastor was um, I, I was in charge of one of three copies of the church keys. And so myself, Will and Jan would, would swap the keys, but ultimately I was responsible for it. And one day I was getting out of my car and I had it in my hand along with some rubbish. I threw it in the bin. And I remember throwing it in the bin. I thought, oh, I'll just get it tomorrow. And the next morning I woke up 
and it was bin day. I lost the church keys and I had plunged into a very sad, deep despair because I was so afraid of um, what pastor was going to say and um, eventually plucked up the courage to tell him after three or four weeks of searching around the house and turning my life upside down. He was just so gracious. He just said, oh, it's okay. We'll just spend uh, $10,000 to change the locks. <laughs> so I'm counting up all my tithes and offerings, seeing how long it's going to take to sort it out. But uh, Pastor's always been uh, so merciful. Uh, I, I can feel him biting his tongue and wanting to really express how he felt, but he would just um, put on Christ. He would always be, uh, he would take the higher road where he wanted to maybe explode. Uh, he would um, instead just understand and comfort and, and let us say what we needed to say. Uh, we have some big shoes to fill. Um, pastor's left a huge hole in our hearts, in our lives, dedicating our kids unto the Lord and he married us. Just so many moments through the years that I'm grateful for. Uh, we've been grieving a lot the past few days, just trying to comprehend uh, the loss of our, our commando. But um, I'm so grateful that he's not suffering. There's no more pain. Uh, he's, he's safe with Jesus and he's probably, he's probably waiting for us. <laughs> he's celebrating. So there's, a, there's an envy of sorts because we want to be where he is. But uh, as we mourn, we're just flooded with good memories and good moments. Pastor Rudy and Pastor Marian had a significant impact on my Christian journey. Growing in the knowledge of the Word of God and being inspired to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. And through the years I had witnessed Pastor Rudy's unwavering commitment to his calling. He was a man of God with faith and wisdom. He was a man of action. He had exemplary management and leadership skills. He portrays a leader with integrity. Under his leadership, children ministry was entrusted to me to lead from 2004 to present. His love to his flock is always evident regardless of age and that includes the children. Your passing Pastor Rudy will be hard to accept as your presence every Sunday will be missed greatly. As a Bible school teacher, he was actually my favorite because the way that he had taught, um, he, he taught with so much conviction, passion, and love for the Word of God. I've learned the true meaning of commitment and dedication and servanthood in the way that he had lived. He was an excellent leader. He led by examples. Pastor Rudy, on a personal note, uh, he'd always been there for my family. Every time that we would call you on a short notice, you would turn up and you would pick up the phone when I needed to talk to you. Uh, to get godly counsel. You have dedicated three of my children. You have dedicated the house that we live in right now. You have officiated the wedding of Micah and Michael. We couldn't thank you enough. Um, on behalf of my family, thank you so much. We love you. We're gonna miss your your sermon, your teaching, your smile, your jokes, your singing and dancing during worship. We love you and I'm sorry that we couldn't, we couldn't tell you this when you were alive. Pastor Ruditan's kindness and generosity not only made a profound impact on our lives but also to others. Pastor Rudy Tan reminds us of Jesus in his goodness and his capacity to reach out to others. A man after God's own heart who takes the time to extend his hand and open his heart to all those in need. I remembered my 
first meeting with Life Mission team and Pastor Rudy Tan. At that time, FCF Life Mission doesn't have much funds. So it was decided that FCF Life Mission will support three churches in the Philippines. Shortly after, Pastor Rudy Tan agreed to support five churches instead of three. I can tell you now, FCF Life Mission is making a profound impact to the five churches in the Philippines. On behalf of FCF Life Mission team, I would like to say thank you, Pastor Rudy Tan, for always giving your all. You have touched our lives and our heart. Your generosity and love for mission will always be remembered in our hearts. Someone has said these words, when special people touch our lives, they bless us with their love through everything they give. When special people touch our lives, they teach us how to live. This reflects the life of Pastor Rudy. My husband Ben and I started our journey with FCF when we were still young in our 30s. Pastor Rudy was our first and longest Bible study leader at the time. Together with Pastor Marion, he opened his heart and his home not only to us, but to everyone in the group. Pastor Rudy loved God, loved people, and loved life. Someone has said these words, A great soul never dies. It brings us together again and again. Some of the fondest memories of Pastor Start when I was a little kid, I used to get babysat at the Tans and remember walking in the house, it always smelled so good because Pastor was always cooking breakfast. And even when we had early events here at church, Pastor Rudy would be the one cooking on the grill for everyone. He was always first in, ready to serve people. Throughout my teens, uh, during worship band rehearsals, I'd watch Pastor Rudy meticulously align all the chairs, nothing out of place, picking up rubbish so it was nice and neat for people to walk into church. Then after he would sit down at the front as the worship band rehearsed and joined in to sing and worship, he was a man who loved the presence of God. Every youth camp, conference, leaders retreat, you name it, you can count on Pastor Rudy to be there, ready to pour into the next generation. The children adored him, not just for the free lollipops, but because he adored the children. Our kids will definitely miss running to you on Sunday mornings for those warm hugs. Pastor Rudy, thank you for exemplifying a life living to its fullest. You left nothing behind and you gave it your all and ran your race to finish strong. Only heaven knows how many lives you have reached and impacted to populate heaven. Our prayer is that in your legacy, we would continue to march on in simply loving God and loving people with comfort knowing that you are cheering us on. You will be sorely missed, Pastor. Call on uh, Reggie Tabangay, a nephew of Pastor Rudy. Good evening. Um, when Auntie Marian asked me to speak, uh, you know, in honor of Uncle Rudy, it forced me to reflect and, you know, um, I found out that I had so many mem many memories of him, but because of time constraints, I'm forced to, uh, you know, choose only three um, very unrelated, very distinct uh, memories. But I chose them uh, simply because they underscore to me. They underscore who he was, who he is still to me as a person. Um, in 1998, we visited here. Um, I came with my sisters, excuse me for a second, and my grandparents. There are five of us, um, but you know, despite having to share their home with five other people, 
um, Uncle Rudy just made us feel welcome. Um, he was very cordial, very warm. Um, he cooked us food. He led the way, uh, you know, in, in taking us around, um, around Sydney. Uh, we went as far as, as Brisbane uh, and, and Canberra. Um, so, uh, and always the good food, you know, breakfast, dinner. Um, and then uh, later on, when my family and I, um, you know, uh, came to Australia, and as recently as five years ago, uh, we were planning a move to Sydney. Uh, I needed to start a job. Uh, but at that point in time, um, we haven't found a place for us yet. So I asked if I could stay with them. And uh, I was aware that at that point in time, uh, Uncle Rudy was already having some health uh, issues. But you know, he graciously allowed me to stay with them. Uh, of course, you know, the bonuses would be breakfast, and then uh, most days I'd have uh, lunch, take to work, and dinner when I got home. Okay, so um, the third memory that I could uh, think of really is in 2004, they, Auntie Marian and Uncle Rudy happened to visit us uh, at our place. Uh, and he introduced us to Jesus Christ at that point, which was very timely. Uh, because my wife was being bothered uh, every night by an evil spirit. So he led us through the uh, uh, acceptance prayer, dedicated the house, and from then on, uh, we were never bothered by anything. So anyway, what these three uh, events underscore for me is that Uncle Rudy was a gracious, kind and generous person. Um, he was truly also my spiritual father. And for uh, the last 16 years that uh, we've been here, he, is, he was and still is uh, the closest thing to a dad to me. Thank you. We'll now call on our brother Jun Nankanas, a ministry partner and friend. I have known uh, Pastor Rudy since 1993, when I and my family arrived in Australia. And on my first month here in Australia, I volunteered at FCF to help with the technical side, like in sound and lights and everything. And that started 29 years, 29 exciting years of working with Pastor Rudy as his main technical man. And it was a privilege to work under his leadership. As the one in charge of technical, me and Pastor have been to a lot of weddings. We have been to a lot of dedications. And sadly, we also have been to some funerals. And in those occasions, I have seen his dedication. That no matter how big or small the event, the preparation and attention to details, they are all the same. And he took time to talk to people and ask them how they are doing, they were doing. I would say we were a good team. We formed a good team. His focus was on the needs of people while I concentrated on the technical side of the ministry. After Typhoon Yolanda visited or destroyed Tacloban, we visited the Thailands in behalf of the poor scriptures to see and document the repairs that were going on at these poor square churches. And it was not an easy travel going around the islands 
on jeepney without seat belts. But he took it all with enthusiasm that it was a part of being in the ministry and not a holiday. And as I look around in this beautiful sanctuary, I remember pastor's plans and dreams, and they were all fulfilled as the years went by. Like the wide screen on top, on top of me, behind. Long before COVID, we are already on live streams on Facebook and YouTube, and he even go to radio ministry. Pastor Rudy was a good steward of, good, of God's money. Before COVID, I usually pass by his office and we talk after work and we talk a lot about the church, usually on the technical side. The things that needs repair, upgrade left and right, one time I recommended an upgrade and he asked, will 80% of the members notice it? And I said, no, most probably not. But compared to the church south, they have equipment 10 times more than ours, I told him. And right then and there, he called the pastor. After talking to them, after talking with him, he said, you are right, June. And in my heart, I said, I know I'm right. <laughs> but it's still the same. He did not approve my plans. <laughs> he said, it's not my plan to beat the church next door. It's not my plan to spend money and effort just to be better than anybody else, he said. We're going to spend money wisely to help and to support others and for the gospel. And he approved less than half. And after a while, the equipment, speakers, everything was installed and they worked pretty well. And he's right. Majority of the members did not hear or see the difference. <laughs> Pastor Rudy has been a blessing to our family. He flew to Japan to officiate the wedding of my son Michael to Chisato. He dedicated my two grandchildren, Elisa and Caleb. I have been dreaming that there should be more. He also dedicated our home in St. Clair. And Pastor Rudy, thank you for your ministry to me and my family for 29 years. We love you. And of course, this is not goodbye, but see you later in God's perfect timing. Thank you, June. We'll call on Michael Rosella, a ministry partner and friend. Good evening, everybody. To those who don't know me, I'm uh, Michael Rosella, a ministry worker of FCF Life Center, the church on the highway. Something that I love about Pastor Rudy, I had experienced his spiritual guidance that made my walk and full commitment to the FCF family even stronger than it already was. He was instrumental in encouraging me to finish Bible school, and I graduated the year my daughter, Miracle, was born. If you can see over there, that's the first day Miracle was born, and he was present straight away because that was his first grandchild. Sorry, Jack, <laughs> uh, Ryan, and Anderson, yeah. because I was his first son. Uh, sorry, Randolph and Munin. <laughs> Anyway, 
I will sum up in two ways how Pastor Rudy impacted my spiritual walk with Jesus. First, he was supportive in prayer when we were asking God for a child for nine and a half years. This really touched our heart. Especially during the time when my wife, Annie, had few miscarriages. The most difficult years as husband and wife. <laughs> Pastor Rudy was always present, always available, encouraging and praying for us to have our full trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of this, which eventually culminated in our miracle children, Miracle and Mirachelle. I was so grateful for those prayers. As it says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, let each one of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. That's how Pastor Rudy was in my life and in the life of my wife and my family. The second way Pastor Rudy showed to be a great influence in my life when he requested me to be an area coordinator of Minchin Bari Area Group. It was a big responsibility. Pastor's word to me that day were, Kaya mo yan. You can do it. It was only after listening to his request I realized he saw some potential in the uniqueness of my character, in the commitment, in the ministry. I didn't even know that I had it myself. He was very good in that. Very good. Pastor Rudy always used to call me in three different names. I think I shared this to some of you already, but Pastor Rudy, pasensya ka na. He calls me Mickey when he's joking. Mickey, salubungin mo na yung bangkay. Mickey, welcome the casket. He's waiting for you outside. I hated that. <laughs> Pastor Rudy knows I really, I really don't like to look at caskets. Nor do I like viewing like tonight. Don't like, hate it. The second name, when he calls me Mike, it means he's requesting something from me. <laughs> Mike, please check if the pastors and elders are late in coming to the service. <laughs> yes, guys, I was the mole. Listen to the Sunday preacher, and I will call you and report to me. I will be overseas or out of town. This was before the online service when all our, it was posted and streamlined in Facebook and YouTube. That was before those times. So I tell you, brothers and sisters, if you have prince, if you have prince once in FCF, and you were not called back, it must have been my feedback. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah, joke lang yun, ah. <laughs> oh, where am I now? Okay. The last name he used to call me was, with my common name, Michael. Oh, no. How did he say it? Michael. Michael. <laughs> this would be when I get worried and I would think, what have I done wrong now? <laughs> but being a father figure, he was always kind, gracious, and gentle in correction. I've experienced that most of the time. 
Pastor Rudy, you put me in an awkward position, situation. I told you in the past, I will not be looking inside the casket in this sanctuary. No matter who it was, I will not look at all. Buti na lang nakasara. You really love me, Pastor. I admire you. He replied, we'll see, Mike, we'll see. It is a challenge that is hard to overcome. This is the last time I'm going to see my dear pastor, my father figure, my mentor. Confidante, my friend, my brother in Christ. But I think I will have an exemption tonight. Kung bubuksan ulit yan. <laughs> it is a goodbye for now, Pastor Rudy. Zachen. Thank you. Michael. Now we can call on Pastor Bonnie Bonifacio, four square pastor based in Adelaide. Uh, yeah, we are from Adelaide, and our church uh, give the deepest condolence. We were all shocked when Pastor Rudy passed away, when we heard about it last uh, Tuesday last week. And because I was telling the church a lot of things, our conversation with Pastor Rudy, and uh, suddenly he passed away. And, and uh, we were really in shock. But, you know, I met Pastor, sorry, by the way, I did not prepare any notes, so sorry if I'm all over the place. But, you know, I met Pastor Rudy when I came to Australia 2004. You know, soon after that, I, I met him. And he's always the one encouraging me. And I was just a person studying birds and bats in orange. But he will always encourage me, hey, why don't you establish a church? Why don't you build a church? You know, and for 10 years, I said, no, I don't have a calling. But every time I have a problem, you've heard, it's always generous. It's always kind. Whenever we have a problem, we will always retreat here. Every now and then, maybe you see us once a year. <laughs> uh, but we always retreat here. And my relationship with Pastor Rudy is this. It's a no-nonsense relationship. You know, you've heard about his generosity. You've heard about his kindness. But there's one thing that I will really miss. He has a look that when he looks at you, it feels like he's exposing your soul. <laughs> it's just that you cannot pretend. You know, and that is my relationship with Pastor Rudy because whenever I come here, you know, it's always in a way I'm retreating from something and I'm going to seek refuge in this place. And that is always, you know, sometimes I, I, I will feel I'm, I'm, I'm courageous, that I'm, you know, really out there. He will give me a look. And he will really just speak to my soul and says, is that really the case? And it immediately, you know, the response that I have with him is that you start to evaluate whatever, you know, whatever I'm saying to him. Is it really the truth? You know, and he has a tendency to unmask you. Is that your experience? Because that has been my experience with Pastor Rudy. He's always been there as a father. He's always there guiding. And the best thing is this. He's always encouraging me. And let me tell you, even now as a church, two months ago, he's always encouraging us. Many times I will email him. I will call him. In the back of my mind, can I just be go back studying birds and bats instead of pastoring? And he will always encourage me, go for it. 
continue doing. And there's one thing that he keeps telling me. Keep winning soul. Keep sharing the gospel. Keep evangelizing. And that is always the three things when I start to complain how difficult it is to become a pastor. <laughs> he always says, keep sharing, keep evangelizing, keep sharing the gospel. And let me tell you, that is what we're doing in Adelaide. We're just in the business of sharing the gospel. And that is because of the encouragement of Pastor Rudy Tan. As I've said, the only thing I can say about Pastor Rudy, he has a way of encouraging you. Can I return that favor to you now? I know it is a time of difficulty. My background is science. I've heard of this story. You know, they try to mimic a perfect ecosystem. They call it Biosphere 2. This is in preparation if we're going to, you know, conquer some planets. What they did is they created a, a dome, you know, in the middle of a desert. And in there, they started planting trees, and they controlled everything. The humidity, the temperature, the light, the nutrients on the soil, and everything else. So the response of the trees is that they started shooting up. They really went and grew fast, really fast. But they suddenly observed that on certain height of the trees, they started falling. They started really cannot hold their own weight. And suddenly they realized they can mimic everything, but they cannot mimic wind. Because the wind is the one that creates wood stress that strengthens trees. And with the since it is in a dome, there's no wind. And when the wood is heavy, without wood stress, they will just fall. Let me tell you this, guys. Let me encourage you because Pastor Rudy always encouraged me. Hey, you might be experiencing some wind right now as a church, as a family. That will actually strengthen you. Amen? I will make it short. How do you honor such a great man? Keep sharing the gospel. You know, keep winning souls. Keep evangelizing. But let me add another thing on that. Being a pastor myself, let me ask you, and I'll put you into task as a church and as his friend. Honor. Pastor Marion. Sorry about this because I only knew Pastor Rudy for almost 18 years. But let me tell you as a pastor, the one that always stands with him, with all the criticism, with all the problem of church, with all the problem of everybody else, it is his wife. You want to honor him? Honor Pastor Marion. And I honor Pastor Rudy and honor you, Pastor Marion. It's difficult to stick with a great man who has a big target on his back. It is always the wife that bears the grunts, that bears the difficulty. And I honor Pastor Rudy for staying strong for you guys. And I honor Ati Marian, Pastor Marian, for sticking by his side. So that is the only thing my message to you. Our church in Adelaide honors him and honors you. And you're always in our hearts. That's it. Thank you, Pastor Bonnie. We're going to watch now the second set of video tributes. I would like to thank you for all the help that you have given me. You have been my good shepherd, and you have been my good teacher, and you have been compassionate to me, and you have been my friend. And uh, particularly, I remember the, a big help you have given me was when Peter was uh, 
Peter's remains was still in the Philippines, and you have helped me a lot, even including uh, cousin coming to Australia to accompany me with the, with the body of Peter. And I thank you for that. And all the knowledge I have uh, learned um, about God was uh, through your preaching and through your uh, teaching in small groups. And I am very, very, uh, very grateful for that. And they were all hidden, they're all hidden in my heart. And from time to time, so I mean, someone preached and I said, oh, pastor did say that. And he was um, eternally grateful to you. Even when I have some problems, I come to you. And you really, you really understand, you are truly compassionate and and I am, I will miss you. And I'm actually, I have already started missing you. I'm uh, just forever grateful for the impact that Pastor really has made in my life personally. I, I just remember my lunches with him, you know, serving in business council. He's always very personable with myself. And actually, he's one of the, my heroes, always believing in me the counsel that he's given to me, very timely. And it's, it's no surprise to me when I went to church today that the theme is actually Thanksgiving. Um, when I went to him on one occasion, feeling very down, he told me, Ed, just start being grateful. That's all you have to do. And I, I'll always remember that, that word of advice. And he'd say things with a smile. He was always the, my greatest supporter, one of them. Every dream, I've expressed it to him. Things that I proposed, he didn't think they were silly. Always there for me. Thank you, Pastor Rudy. I know you're watching over me. I still need you to guide me. That dream's gonna happen. You know what it is. Thank you. I will never forget the sacrifices. He made in fulfilling God's calling in his life. And in a span of 27 years, he always, when he goes on holiday and he's overseas, he never is away for more than two Sunday services. That's how he cared for us. He's always on time in every occasion, whether it's a Sunday service or a meeting, he's always on time and in every occasions like birthdays, etc., he's not like me. He's not like me. But one thing, he didn't tell me that I'm late. I was late. He was so gentle in dealing with me. And thank you, Pastor Rudy, for being so gentle in dealing with your workers. So the sacrifices of these godly people in fulfilling God's calling in their lives will not be forgotten. They are very committed and dedicated to the calling of God in their life. We are forever grateful, Pastor Rudy Tan, for all the things that you have done to the Lacambra family. You've been generous, kind, and a loving pastor and a true friend to us. We will treasure in our hearts all the things that you have done to us. We thank God for your life, and we love you forever. Yeah, we just want to honor Pastor Rudy, um, just for being a, a true pastor to us. Um, he really did um, build up our generation and um, sow into us. He taught us about discipleship and just the foundations of Christianity. Um, yeah, Pastor Rudy was there for all of our moments in life. He would visit us when we were in hospital. Um, he would pray for us in really difficult times and, and celebrate with us when he married us, dedicated both of our children. And yeah, even just we'd visit, say, Menina at home and things like that. And yeah, he would, yeah, it was always good to see him. And he was basically like a spiritual dad who helped us grow in our faith. Um, yeah, I'll always remember him for just being really steadfast. Um, I'll miss him because he's just not going to be there anymore. But um, he was 
yeah, he's always so firm and just steadfast, immovable, one of those people who won't let circumstance um, affect his faith in God. And that's something that I'll definitely take away and learn from his life. The pastor's faithfulness really uh, shone when he was, you know, I think even through every season like of my life that um, he was, yeah, a real father figure. And, and I still remember one time when I was like going through quite a bit and, um, and he prayed for me and it was, he, was like, he was like a real father in that sense where he would like really look after his, um, his flock. And yeah. yeah, and I, yeah, oh man. He really believed in, his, um, in those that, you know, he called his, um, his church. Yeah. Uh, he, really, um, he really sowed and invested. And even when I think we didn't believe in ourselves, um, Pastor Rudy really, you know, believed that, you know, there were greater things for us, so. Yeah. Joey and I have known Pastor Rudy since 1989, when we first attended FCF service at Westmead. I've known Pastor Rudy as a loving, caring, a great pastor and a good shepherd to this FCF family church. Indeed, we will surely miss him um, I concur with what she said, that he was a great pastor, uh, teacher, shepherd, administrator as well. He was a man of many talents, which makes me re remember the, the parable of the talents. He said that you um, thou good and faithful servant, because you have been faithful in little things, you're going to be a ruler over many things. I cannot just, I cannot imagine the uh, reception that Pastor Rudy got when he entered glory. Um, I think about um, Billy Graham and all the other generals that passed through, but I also remember Pastor Rudy. I'm sure that he got a tremendous reception. He was indeed a good and faithful servant. Pastor Rudy always gave counsel. So I was in youth ministry, in dance and drama ministry, uh, before we left for the U.S. And even in those moments whenever I needed encouragement or counsel or just seek advice, he was always there. And even in my most difficult days, when I was even heartbroken, <laughs> um, you know, seeking counsel for God's best for my life, for my future, he was always there to encourage and to just give the right words um, to give advice. Even to the point where when I was so down, he said, let me send you to a, a conference so you can learn more about dance or drama. Because he knew that serving God and being in the presence of God is what gives me strength. So I'm really thankful for that. Uh, Pastor Rudy, he's funny, he's fun, he's so loving and he's so sweet. Um, yeah, and every time we would see him, you know, he would just give you an embrace and always so encouraging to see him. And two really key things that I really remember about Pastor is that every time we visited Australia, um, he would always say, can you do special number? <laughs> Even if we weren't ready, but it's like, you know what, it's such a joy. I mean, I actually grew up very insecure of myself and insecure of, of my talents or gifts. Um, but he always just encouraged to use it for God. And so, yeah, I, even at last minute, just come up with a choreography or my sisters and I would put together a song and we were just always so encouraged. Um, and he was our, he was such a big supporter and encourager of, of anybody's ministry and anything that every, anybody wants to do. Um, yeah, we'll miss Pastor, we'll miss his presence. But we know he's, you know, rejoicing in heaven and, um, yeah, till we meet again. We thank our Lord God for bringing people like you, Pastor Rudy, into our lives. Thank you, Pastor Rudy, for enriching our knowledge of God, for building us up in the faith, and for your words of wisdom. We love you. Forever grateful I am for the love and care you have shown my family and me through the years. You are a true and great leader, a man of wisdom and noble character. Thank you, Pastor Rudy. I am truly blessed to have known you and you will always have a special place in my heart. Thank you for being a part of my life. I will miss you 
Love you, Pastor Rudy. I love you, Pastor Rudy, and I will miss you from Layla Rose. That's what you call me by my full name, and I will dearly miss that. We love you, and we will miss you. Our sincere sympathies to Tita Marian, to Manina, to Randolph, um, V, and Glenn, uh, and the FCF family for this massive hole um, that Pastor's departure has left in our hearts. Um, I'm in disbelief because it felt like he'd be with us forever. Um, he was strong like an ox. I can't believe that he's not going to be here anymore. Um, he, he weaned us as, as young Christians at FCF. Uh, he was our shepherd for 20 years. I remember sitting under him, teaching the word and fondly remembering the golden years to me, late 90s and early 2000s, and just learning and soaking in all the wisdom and knowledge that, that he had from the Lord. It was a gift from God. Um, I'll never forget um, the times that he'd pat me on the back really roughly, but to him, that's, that's his encouragement. Um, I love, I finally remember how, how much of a laugh that he had. He had such a great sense of humor. Oh, I'm gonna miss him. Yeah, um, we're gonna miss Pastor. He was a firm fixture in our faith journey and he was jitter to us at times and Pastor and others. He was our Nino for our marriage and he dedicated our first son Harrison. We'll miss him dearly and just grateful for the, um, yeah, just all the wisdom and all the love and prayers and care he's shown us over the years. We'll miss you, Pastor, and we honor you today. We're going to call on uh, Abe Amores, fraternity brother of Pastor Rui uh, from the University of the Philippines. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Friends in Christ, I am Abraham Amores and a fraternity brother of Pastor Rudy. We were members of the Beta Epsilon Fraternity at the University of the Philippines in Diliman, Quezon City. I belong to BATS 1962, while Brad Rudy in BATS 1967. He transferred from engineering at UP in 1970 to pursue a commerce degree, but ended up in the emerging computer industry. He then made a transition beyond the computer field to become a full-time pastor of his church. Brother Rudy has always been fascinated about my story about Rookwood Necropolis as the favorite destination of choice for our visiting fraternity brothers from overseas. Some of them had mistakenly imagined the place a world-famous tourist resort. To their horror, I'll be surprised when I drove through the gates of Rookwood with the car stereo blaring the Bee Gees song, Staying Alive. <laughs> I realized though many of our brother, uh, brothers in Sydney, including Brad Rudy and Sis Marion, they have not visited the place yet. And so I decided to take them for a day tour. Visiting Rookwood gave them a deeper appreciation and understanding of the religious, educational, cultural beliefs, tradition, and values of different nationalities. Plus the fact the heritage of the place has been beautifully preserved and maintained. And so it's time the opportunity arises, a visiting brad is assured of a free tour to a peaceful and solemn place called Rookwood. If some of you have not been there yet, 
Search Rookwood on your Google map. Once you have reached the place, your mobile phone will gladly announce you have reached, finally reached your destination. <laughs> Brother Rudy wrote an article in the Fraternity's uh, 80th Foundation Anniversary and Grand Homecoming Yearbook titled, the title of his article is, From Software to Spiritual Development. A glorious transition. He described in his involvement in the establishment of his church as follows. In 1981, I met up with an ex Colgator. He worked with Colgate Palmolive and became involved with the Filipino Christian group which grew to become a church in 1988, the Filipino Christian Fellowship. He said that I was appointed assistant pastor in 1989. And in February 1995, I resigned as software development manager at Johnson & Johnson and accepted a full-time pastoral role. We bought a land owned previously by a memorial park at Minchinbury, which was referred to as the dead center of Sydney. <laughs> we opened a 40, uh, 450 seat church, which was dedicated as the Filipino Christian Fellowship Life Center. Sanctuary in the same year. In 1999, we were offered more land and hence built the FCF Growth Center for our youth and children to ensure the future growth of our congregation. Some years later, it came to mind one other center, he, as I said, he forgot to build. Asking what it was, I said, what about the Gayut Center? What about the Gayut Center? Where are you going to build it? With a good laugh, he responded, no need to build it. It has been there ready a long time ago, <laughs> a few 50 meters away from here. <laughs> As he jokingly referred to Pine Grove. <laughs> his, legacy pursue, his legacy is pursuing a mission to reach more Filipinos in Western Sydney, bringing to our compatriots the message of God's love through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is not the time for us to grieve Brad Rudy's death, but it's our time to celebrate his life. He has gone home now and guided by his faith. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept faith. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Brother Rudy is a generous person and we love him very much. He is a blessing to our fraternity, especially to our brothers here in Sydney. Despite his busyness, Despite his involvement in his church, he still find time to join us in our monthly Kapihan and other events. He recently joined our retirees group. And uh, gladly, we always uh, be cheerful when uh, he and uh, Sister Marion comes around to join us. 
To our fraternity brothers and betanets, let us all think let us all think back and remember how good he was, how he touched our lives and those of others. We should all be thankful to have known him as our dear, loving, generous, and dedicated brother. Goodbye, Brother Rudy, until we all meet in Christ and are with you. May you rest in peace. Arnilda Santos, a ministry partner and friend. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Nilda Santos. I, I, my husband and I are one of the life group coordinators and also elders of our church. You know, this is my first time to um, give a tribute because I am used to give messages on birthdays, anniversaries, and dedication, and other happy occasions. But tonight, I am here to provide a brief but meaningful insight of the life of our very dear pastor, Rudy Tan. He was a devoted leader a mentor, a spiritual father, and a friend. I'm, I've known Pastor Rudy Tan for 32 years, and in those years, God used him as his instrument in providing my spiritual life, my spiritual growth, as I also in as he also inspired me to live a simple and humble life. I, became, I become closer to God because of Pastor Rudy's special guidance, trainings, and teachings. He was present during many milestones in my life. At my 25th wedding anniversary, at my children's weddings, and the dedication services of my seven grandchildren. Grandchildren. They were all happy occasions. But mind you, he was also present during the most trying and tough times in my life. This happened in 2019 when my only daughter was in ICU sick and one was unconscious for almost three months. Pastor Rudy and Pastor Marion were the first one to visit us in the hospital. They prayed and interceded and they co continued to ask God for his mercy and divine healing for my daughter. Until the very day we received the answer from God, my daughter was miraculously healed. Hallelujah. Thank God for giving us a loving, caring, and a supportive pastors. Now, Pastor Rudy, we will surely miss you up here in this pulpit, preaching the word of God every Sunday you will not physically be present this coming Sunday and in succeeding Sundays. And also, I will be missing saying, happy birthday, Pastor, and on any other happy occasions. You have left a legacy that we will always cherish, but we will march on and continue to do the work you have started. Parting ways is such a sweet sorrow, but one thing is certain. You are now in heaven, rejoicing and singing hallelujah with the Lord. In Ecclesiastes 3.11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. 
He has also set eternity in human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. Pastor Rudy, we will meet again in that sweet by and by. Thank you. Thank you, Nilda. Uh, we call on Gloria Versosa, friend. Sorry. Pastor Marion, Monina, and Randolph, Glenn, um, we are here to grieve and cry with you um, for the sudden passing of Pastor Rudy, the pastor that we really love and, and um, admire. Good evening. My name is Gloria Verzosa, and I'm one of the members of this church. It is such a great privilege to stand here before you to honor, pay respect, and show our gratitude to our very honorable Man, to a very honorable man, our beloved Pastor Rudy Tan. It came as a big surprise to learn of the sudden loss of our, bit, of our dear pastor. It is not something that we are expecting of, but God in his sovereign will has called him to eternity, to live in his father's mansion. The message that he used to preach in this same pulpit. So many admirable things and qualities to talk about our pastor. But tonight, I will only name a few. No one would ever doubt that Pastor Rudy has a servant's heart who have exemplified what he has preached and taught for the last 34 years. When my young family first landed in Australia in 1991, we have experienced a very hard beginning. Our first few years didn't go well to the point of considering to go back to our homeland, Philippines. We have moved from one place to another trying to find a suitable place for us to settle in. To my recollection, we have moved five times in six months. On those difficult times, we desperately needed someone to support us, pray with us, and help us in any way. That's when Pastor Rudy and Marion stepped in. Though we had not known them for long at that time, they were there to help pray and show their love and care. As I look back after 31 years, I could truthfully say that Pastor Rudy has a genuine servant's heart, loving and faithful for what he was called for. He didn't hesitate to heed to God's calling through, though before entering into full-time ministry, Pastor Rudy has a very lucrative career at Johnson & Johnson as IT manager in the portfolio of manufacturing and supply chain. He was also instrumental for my husband's employment at the same company. My husband is one of his subordinates then and has worked with Pastor Rudy for three years. While at his secular job, he never missed to conduct Bible studies at nighttime and tirelessly spends his weekends at church. Pastor Rudy was a notable and respected leader. I have admired him for he is a man of character. Not long ago, Pastor Nomer was speaker in our church. And Pastor Rudy has shared with the congregation how Pastor Nomer was appointed to be a pastor. That he was first appointed as an elder for a year. And in that process, I believe Pastor Rudy wants to know him more. His character, his loyalty, and his commitment to the ministry. Pastor Nomer then was appointed as pastor after a year of being an elder. He said it was Pastor Nomer's humility, his humble heart that puts him in that position. It has made me admire Pastor Rudy more because his criteria on appointing a pastor is not that of how many accolades or degree of a person has garnered, but by someone who has a servant's heart, humble not self-conceit, willing to give up their comfort zones, not boasting of his own merits. I remember there was a retreat in Central Coast. He received a call that one of the members of the church in his, 
is in critical condition and he is, she is in a hospital. He actually left Central Coast, drove back to Sydney to visit and pray for that person. Each family of FCF could testify and affirm how passionate he was in serving others to the point of being inconvenienced to what should have been those times spent for his family. He has mentored, taught, nurtured, and equipped future leaders of this church. He knew the importance of training and equipping the younger generation. For he loves, he looks beyond with a vision to expand the territory God has given him. We are here tonight to show our gratitude, for he has become a huge part in our lives. He has touched many lives in different ways. Perhaps you were sick in hospital and he came to visit and prayed for you. Or your marriage were on the rocks and about to fail, but through his godly wisdom and counsel, your marriage was restored. You may have lost a loved one, and with the readiness of his heart, prayed for you and your family for comfort and strength. It may be that time when you were experiencing financial crisis, lost your job, and bills are piling up, and you were one of the recipients of his generosity and benevolence. You may be a parent whose teenager has run away, and you were left with an aching heart. He was there to give you counsel, comfort, and has prayed for you. You may be one of the youth whom he sent to Bible school, and you were granted with a subsidy to study and be equipped for future ministries. You may be a representative of an organization tonight, or a church, and you have come to him for help. Without seeking for any returns or profit, he has gladly received and accepted your requests. For what I believe in my heart, he has not denied any help someone who is in need. In 2004, when Roland was seeking for medical help in the United States, and he was about to return to Australia, he needed someone to assist him in traveling back to Sydney. I have no one to leave my children then. Pastor Rudy came to our rescue. He sent Monina to be with my, young, with my three young children and stayed with them for a week. What a demonstration of sacrifice and care when someone is in, need, is in desperate need. Pastor Rudy has invested not on material things, but set up his riches in heaven. He is a true leader, visionary, an epitome of Christ craftsmanship. He traded a big pocket, a promising career, over winning souls and discipling people. He has also experienced ups and downs like us, pressures and tensions, and sometimes he would share with us, with the congregation, how he feels. But nothing has seemed to be insurmountable. He has conquered trials and testings, not by his own strength, but by the strength and power of God. Pastor Rudy, you have left a good, admirable, and great imprint in our hearts with your kindness, love, and sacrifice. You have finished 73 years of earthly life with excellence. Thank you for being a great example of servanthood, a quality that is quintessential of a leader. FCF will continue to march on until we see Jesus. We love you, Pastor, and we will sorely miss you. Paalam. Thank you, Glo. Well, I'm the last person to speak tonight to give a tribute before Pastor Glenn comes in for the message. Well, Pastor Rudy was my friend, my senior pastor, as well as my compare. So I call him Pare because being the husband of my kumare, Marion, the godmother to my only daughter, Jamie. Let me quote to you the words of the great American writer and educator, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, in his poem, A Psalm of Life. It says, lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime, but departing leave we have us footprints in the sands of time. Indeed, the legacy and the memory and the programs that Pastor Rudy 
instituted in FCF would mark footprints that cannot be ignored or forgotten. They will remain embedded in the very fabric of FCF, not just for this generation, but in generations to come. As a senior pastor, Pastor Rudy was effective and efficient. Effective because he instituted programs that were appropriate at that time. Efficient because he made sure that the programs would run properly, smoothly, and in order. As a leader, he was pragmatic, yet reasonable. He was strict, yet fair. He was decisive, yet tactful, as well as cautious. He was a man of prayer, and prayer he gave, he gave premium to ours. He was always on time at meetings that would embarrass me. He instituted and said pastors and elders should come once a month, the first Saturday of the month, at 7.30 in the morning for prayer. And so one time, one Saturday, I came here ahead of him. I thought I would be very early, so I would beat him. But you know what? When I came here, he was already in church. You know where you find him? He was in the kitchen, cooking breakfast for all of us, pastors and elders. He would have prepared his favorite or signature dishes, corned beef and sizzling bacon. And then he would just fry eggs and lots of them. And after preparing breakfast, he would come to the sanctuary and he would actually sit right here where the coffin is. And he would say to me, Pare, can you lead two songs before the prayer? It went on for months. And we thought, it's not good for pastor to be doing all the breakfast and leading the prayer. So we had to rotating a schedule of two families to do the breakfast and one family to lead the singing and also the exhortation. He also put premium on worship, praise and worship. One time he said to me, as a senior pastor, I am the worship leader, which I thought that made sense because as the worship leader, he had to make sure that the service would run smoothly, properly, and in order. So I would song lead on this side, and then he would be standing next to me to make sure that when I song lead, I had to be conscious at the periphery of my eyes that I would know exactly whether he would ask me to stop, to sing louder. And he said to me, you just don't say, open your mouth and clap your hands and thank the Lord for everything. That's what I learned from him. He was also a very good teacher. He was the one who encouraged me to go to Bible school. And I, I actually said no because I was so busy in my secular job as uh, in the Australian Securities Investments Commission. But then he prompted me and prodded me and said, you really have to go to Bible school. And so when he was graduating, I enrolled in Bible school. But in one of the subjects, we were classmates. The following year, he graduated, and then he became my teacher in, in the book of Revelation. And so I said to myself, Pare, baka naman eh, okay ang grades ko dyan, ikumpare kita eh. He gave me good grades, and I wasn't sure whether it was because he was my compare or something else. But anyway, I'm going to finish my uh, tribute to you today. Pastor Rudy Tan was preaching God's word for several years. He loved the Bible, but somehow in his life, he dedicated himself, committed himself, being faithful to God's word in all aspects of life. But now, 
Pas pare, you will remain alive in the hearts of many people, including mine. The only difference, you have changed your address. You're no longer living in a house made of bricks and mortar. You're no living in the house made by the mighty hand of God that you will call home. We will see you once again. But for now, till we meet again. This time I would like to call on Acts to sing for us the song, Till We Meet, Meet Again. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It's such a, it's a blessing to see you all. And uh, our names are, are, we're called Acts, but we've been known growing up as Sahagan sisters. And um, our families, the Sahagan family, the Rojo and Tekpo families, just want to express our condolences to, to the Marian, to Benina, to Randolph, and to your whole family. You're all very special to all of us. And that is why we are here tonight. The phrase that I've been hearing since Pastor passed, whether it's from the worship team, the youth ministry, everyone I'm around has been for Pastor, for Pastor Rudy. So even if, even after he has passed, he's still making an impact in our lives. Even a moment where I was tempted to think something or do something that I probably, is the, probably not pleasing to the Lord. I remembered Pastor's face. It's like, for pastor we wish we had more opportunity to serve with him here in Sydney now that we're back but we pray that as one body of Christ regardless of what church we go to that we will continue the legacy that he has begun and that is to share the gospel to our pastor our Nino from our wedding our friend and spiritual dad Thank you, Pastor Rudy, for being there for all of us, for always praying for all of our families. He has been doing a great miracle in each of our lives. And even my niece, Charlize, just miracle after miracle. So we thank you. The song we're going to sing is an Acts original written by Timmy. And it summarizes everything that has been said tonight, and I'm sure more. And we dedicate this song to Pastor. We will miss you dearly. And we know this is not goodbye. But till we meet again. Why? 
watching over me from there. But in time, in his time, we'll meet again. You led me to the truth to find my way truth to find my way you showed me hope no matter come what may you taught me how to love I am who I am because of you and now that you're gone there's an emptiness and the only way to fill that place is till we meet again how I long to be beside you till we meet again I await the day I see you I know you're in Watching over me from there But in time, in his time We'll meet again You have been my inspiration You shed a love that from above But in time, in his time, but in time, in his time, but in time, in God's time, will meet again. Thank you, Catherine, Fatima, and uh, Christine, and Angelo. Let me introduce to you uh, Pastor Glenn Castro, the son-in-law of Pastor Rudy. <clears throat> good, evening. good evening, everyone. My name's Glenn. That's like Pastor Ian said, I'm the son-in-law of the late Pastor Rudy. On behalf of the Tan family, I thank you all for coming tonight. I also want to say welcome to those who have joined us online, especially to our families overseas. I still don't remember saying yes to this, bringing in the word of comfort. But I know he's been praying for a while for me to get up to the pulpit again, so even in your debt, huh? <laughs> try to do this. We're here to honor the life of Pastor Rudy Tan. God in his grace gave Pastor 73 years of life on this earth. It was truly a life well lived. It might be difficult to believe, but the Bible says that it's actually good for us to be here tonight. In Ecclesiastes 7.2, God says this, it's better to, go a better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting. For death is the destiny of every person. The living should take this to heart. In other words, God says it's better to go to a funeral than to a party. It's better to be in a gravesite than a football game. I think there are at least three reasons for this. 
First, this is, is a time for us to celebrate the life that gave to Pastor. We're sad, but we also want to remember him. And that's what we have been, done, been doing and will continue to do on Saturday. And so this is a time for us to remember Pastor Rudy. Second, it's a time for us to say goodbye to Papa. As hard as it is, this service will help us begin the process of letting go. In the early hours of Tuesday, November 22, Pastor breathed his last. My wife texted me with two heartbreaking words. He's gone. I cried and prayed and I cried, but I wasn't ready to say goodbye. And third, it's a time for us to take a look at our own lives. We're all going to die someday. Death is a destiny of every person. It's a great, great time to ask some tough questions. Questions like, am I ready to die? And where will I go when my life is over? What will I leave behind? What will be my legacy? When it comes right down to it, this service is more for us who are living. And so we're going to remember Pastor. We're going to say goodbye to Papa. And we're going to reflect on our own lives. There's a story in the Bible that addresses some of the same things that most of us are feeling tonight. It's tucked in the Gospel of John in the 11th chapter. Here we read a funeral that involved hard questions, deep feelings, and potential hope. The deceased is a man named Lazarus. He comes from a very close family. Among them are two sisters, Mary and Martha. Jesus arrives four days after Lazarus dies. And as he approaches the house, full of people crying, both sisters run out to him at separate, separate times and says, Lord, if you've been here, my brother would not have died. I suspect some of you are asking if questions as well. If only I had spent more time with Papa. If only I had told him how I felt more often. If only I've done this or that, these kinds of if questions are normal. Don't blame yourself. It's not healthy and it's not right. Well, if we're not supposed to blame ourselves, then maybe God is to blame for this. That's precisely the suggestion both Mary and Martha make when they are grieving over the death of their brother. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I've learned long ago that it's really senseless to either accuse God or to try to defend him. But neither is it sinful to question him. Some of you are wondering why God will allow this to happen. It's okay for you to ask these kind of questions. Jesus does not rebuke these sisters for suggesting that perhaps their brother's death was his fault. Ecclesiastes 3.2 reminds us that there is a time to be born and a time to die. As we continue with the story, we find the shortest verse in the entire Bible. Surrounded by family and friends, Jesus is deeply moved and asks where the body of Lazarus is. When he views Lazarus, he could have said something extremely profound. Instead, John 11.35 tells us that what Jesus did. He wept. Here is Jesus of Nazareth, the world's most complete, most perfect man, an epitome of strength, attending the funeral of a friend, openly weeping, without embarrassment, without apology. In fact, those watching him said, see how much he loved him. If you feel like crying tonight, don't hold back. If it was okay for Jesus to cry, it's okay for you to cry. God feels your pain. He wants, to let, he wants you to let it out and let him in on your feelings. He wants to help you work through everything you're feeling. He wants to be part of your life. 
God knows what it's like to hurt. Over 2,000 years ago, Father God lost a family member to his one and only son. I can't, cannot even begin to imagine the devastation of losing a child. The question I have to ask you today from the depths of my heart is, if today was your last day, where will you go? You're going to die. Take a moment to let that sink in. You are going to die. One day, I'm going to die. One morning, the sun will rise and you won't see it. Birds will greet the dawn and you won't hear them. Family and friends will gather to celebrate your life. And after you're buried, they'll return to church for lunch. Soon your job and your favorite chair at home and your spot on the team will be filled by someone else. The rest of the world may pause to remember. Then it will carry on as it did before you arrived. You know what? Growing up, debt bothered me. Debt troubled me. I viewed it as the worst thing that can happen in a person's life. I concluded when a, when a person died, that was the end of the story, the end of their existence. After I graduated from high school, my brother and I, with some friends, went camping. There, I almost drowned. I really thought I was going to die. The next year was when my grandpa passed away. He died at an early age of 66. Growing up, the thought of death really disturbed me. You know, a lot of people try to defeat death. Adam couldn't find his way back to the Garden of Eden, where he could have lived forever. Abraham's faith couldn't do it. Moses and all his leadership courage couldn't do it. Noah could build an ark, but he couldn't defeat death. David was a great king, a giant killer, but he couldn't defeat the giant named Death. Solomon had a lot of wisdom, but he couldn't outsmart death. Methuselah lived for 969 years, but he couldn't outlast death. Jacob was a deceiver, but he couldn't trick death. Joshua was a mighty warrior, but he could not fight death. And whatever thing you're good at, it won't defeat death. For death is the destiny of every person. But, but the great news of the gospel is that Jesus has taken the sting out of death. What Jesus did on the cross defeated death once and for all. Death has no longer power and authority. It used to be in charge. It used to call, call the shot. But when Jesus rose from the dead, he did, know what, he did what no other person has done. He permanently conquered death. In this passage, Jesus said to Mary and Martha, in verses 25, 26, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Do you believe this? Jesus didn't merely say that he is a resurrection. Or there, there is a resurrection. He claimed that he is the resurrection. The fact that he would rise from the dead was a guarantee that others would too. We often think that this is the land of the living and that when we die, we go to the land of the dead. The opposite is really true. This is the land of the dying. When our life here is over, we are transferred into the land of the living, either to a place of eternal joy or a place of eternal torment. There are only two possible destinations. You can leave this place the way you came, or you can leave trying to be a good religious person with a vague hope of heaven, or you can leave here tonight with the full assurance that you will go there when you die. The choice is really up to you. James 4.4 4 says this, what is your life? You're a miss that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Pastor's lifespan was below the current average life expectancy at the moment in Australia, which is 83 years old. But even if Papa lived to 85 or even 101, in the light of eternity, it would still be brief. 
Our life is like a mist that appears for a little while and then passes away. Our lives are very fragile. Proverbs 27.1 reminds us that to not boast about tomorrow because we do not know what the day will bring. Some people are always bragging about what they're going to do and they never do anything. One of these days, I'm going to do this. I'll tackle that later. But later may never come. We should never presume upon the future because life is unpredictable. We don't even know what will happen tomorrow, much less next week or next year. The truth is that no one can predict, predict the future. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. God forbid this can be your last night. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter about your economic status. It doesn't matter your education level. Death doesn't care what you have left undone. It doesn't care if your dream hasn't been fulfilled. Death doesn't care about your plans. Life is not promised to anybody. It doesn't matter if you're in good health. Some have lost their life in their sleep. Some have been killed in a car accident. Some have lost their lives tragically by a deranged person. The only thing you and I have is this moment. Life is too unpredictable and too short to live it without God at the center. You know, we count our lives in years, but God tells us in Psalms 90, 12 to number our days. The truth of the matter is that all of us are just one heartbeat away from eternity. In 1 Samuel 23, chapter 20, verse 3, David said, Yet as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only one step between me and death. Jesus said, whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. Do you believe this? If not, don't waste another minute of the one and only life you have right now, right here. Decide to pin all your hopes on Jesus Christ and him alone. I guarantee you, you won't regret it. This moment, you can decide on your eternal status. Amen? Pastor Glenn, I would like to call on uh, the family of Pastor Rudy to please come forward. We're going to pray for them. Uh, Castro and the Tan family, including uh, Reggie and the family. Maybe we can all be upstanding and extend our hands towards this. Um. Pastor Rudy used to say these words. We don't pray for the dead. We pray for the living, especially these families in here. So let's pray. Dear God, loving Heavenly Father, we uphold to you the family of Pastor Rudy, especially Pastor Marion Tan, the children, the grandchildren, the in-laws, even Lord, the siblings, those relatives who are here with us this evening, including those who are watching us online, not just in Sydney, but overseas. We pray, dear God, that you will guide and sustain them in the days and in the months coming. We pray, dear God, that you will comfort them in their loss, hold them in their sorrow, and uphold them in their grief. We pray, dear God, that you'll engulf them with your love, that they rest assured that they are cared for under their loving and tender hearts. Lord, I pray that even in the days that are coming, especially as they prepare for the internment on Saturday, the 3rd of December, that you will 
Cause them to realize that you're always there for them, that you will never leave them nor forsake them, but you sustain them and strengthen them. Strengthen their faith, O God, that you could be bounded together in that relationship amongst themselves and that you will strengthen their relationship as well with you and those around them. Father, we pray that you will lead them into a bright future, knowing that there is a blessed hope that we will soon and they will soon see Pastor Ritan once again in that place where Pastor has now called home. A home that you said in your word in John chapter 14. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. We also pray that this church that Pastor Rudy left behind will be together gathering and putting a hedge of protection upon us. We will support Pastor Marion. We will support this family. We will support the people of Father that Pastor Rudy loved and cared for. And we will always rally behind them in everything that they do. Because we know, dear God, that he has left to us a legacy. And we uphold these families to you. To God be the glory, great things you have done, and we give you praise, we give you honor. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everybody says, amen. amen and amen. Pastor Marion is going to say something. Thank you so much for all of your support. We have been overwhelmed um, by your support. Uh, we would like to invite you to, um, to join us for a meal outside. There are a lot of people here, not just here, but also in the growth center, in the overflow. Parking and leaving is also going to be difficult. But we thank all the people who have helped um, and helped to make this burden very light. But please join us for a meal afterwards. Thank you very much.